All right. So I've got a, a lot of things I want to get off my chest. I've got 45 minutes and probably 167 slides. Um, not, not quite that many. Um, but uh, I want to talk less about uh, Moodle as a, just the software and features and more about Moodle as the project. And there's a lot. We did do a release recently, Moodle 2.9. And uh, that's a picture of my kids there. You may know, those of you long-time Moodlers may know, I put a picture of my kids on every release ever since the beginning. Um, this is one of the other photos that didn't make it from that photo session. Um, I just really like the I Like Pie t-shirt. I just, I don't know why I keep showing this photograph, but. Um, they've really grown up. They're in the time, you know, that, that's representative of how old Moodle is because they're about the same age. My daughter's the same age as Moodle. That's how long we've been going. And there were a lot of features in 2.9 and I'm not going to talk about them because hopefully our community educators and uh, people at HQ are doing their job and pumping that information out and I think there's some sessions about it uh, this week as well. I've been spending a lot of my time thinking about the nature of learning in the past year or so and about the importance of feedback to learning. And to me, feedback is the, like the universal law. If you think of most good educational situations, you can describe them in terms of what kind of feedback loops have you set up for, the, for that person who's learning to uh, interact with other people, to interact with the environment, and to be reflecting. But what does that mean for something like uh, Moodle, which is uh, my third child, if you like, um, uh, also a learning project, and we've learnt a lot over the past uh, 13 years, 14 years. Um, Moodle also uh, develops through feedback, and it develops through by f feedback with the environment, with the, the internet environment. Um, when I started Moodle, Gopher was still pretty common. Uh, it was everywhere. <laughs> In fact, it's still running today. I'm quite glad to, hear, to see. I was doing a bit of Gopher exploration last night. Um, but as you know, the whole internet and all our technologies are evolving very rapidly. And I think in a few years, it's going to be quite quaint that we used to sort of rub our fingers on pieces of glass. Um, things are moving that fast. It develops through feedback from people, and this is a critical part and why these kinds of gatherings are so important, but also on Moodle.org and all the things that we have set up to, to have uh, feedback from the community and uh, around and around with developers. And the reflection part of Moodle is about testing. It's, uh, we have a lot of testing that we do and a lot more we can still do to have Moodle evolving uh, according to its own principles. So it's always important to focus on what the goal of what we hear is. Why are we here? And I, I, I always like to show this slide because it shows our mission. Moodle is a learning platform, which means it's not one system, it's a platform on which you build a system. So each, each institution takes Moodle and can turn it into what the system that they need. Um, we're about supporting teachers with their teaching. We're about supporting learners with their learning. We're about integrating everything for a course. Critically, it's about being open in every way because that allows privacy and that allows customizability and all the things that we, we want. It's critical that Moodle be easily used for free and that encompasses usability, accessibility, and all those things um, from any device. And not just screens, but uh, other devices uh, that people use to access internet now and in the future. It's about being flexible. It's about scaling to any size. Look at the size of this campus. Um, and you know they can take Moodle and run 15,000 active courses on it. It's quite amazing. Um, there are some Moodle sites that have two million users. And lastly, anyone can contribute to global education. And there are many of you here, and I hope you all manage to find each other, who you probably know each other as names on the tracker uh, or as names on the forums. And you, for many years, uh, some of you have talked to each other and shared things. Uh, and you may not have met in person, but you've contributed in some way to Moodle as a global, plat global platform. 
And that's what I love about this project. And I think this needs to exist in the world. We need things like this. Things that are open, that, are, that are, have a strong mission to support education, um, but are not driven by financial interests, are not driven by governmental interests or cultural agendas or anything else, but are trying to be a neutral supporting platform to enable human beings to do whatever they want to do with it. And open source in general uh, is about this, and Moodle's about this. And I feel very strongly this project needs to exist in some way. It'd be a lot easier for me to go and just get a job somewhere. <laughs> Um, but I, I will be working on this for as long as, I, as, as I'm alive, I think. So through the years, we've had so many uh, releases. That's kind of how the releases have looked in the last few years. Um, I'll point out here that Moodle 3.1 will be a long-term support release. That's 100% locked in. So every four releases, we plan to have a long-term support release. Uh, that we keep supporting uh, for a, a few years. And I would normally then start talking about the roadmap for the next release, which is 3.0 and 3.1. Um, and generally, things in Moodle fall into these five camps. But I've got a question mark here because I want to talk about a change in how Moodle is going to be working in the future and how it's going to be developing in the future. So currently, this is the way Moodle works. And I don't normally like to talk about money, but I've been doing it a lot this year. Because when we talk about open source, uh, there is a lot of contributing and a lot of love going around. And that's how it works. But underneath that, there are people who need to eat and have houses over their families' heads. So how do we make free software um, is what I want to talk about here. So currently, this is, this is how we work. We have um, a user community that uses Moodle partners. Moodle partner companies do services, hosting, training, consulting, these sorts of services. They uh, give roughly 10% royalties towards Moodle HQ. That's what we use to pay the core developers. And those core developers coordinate the community, take all those open source things that are floating around, uh, and bring it together into a Moodle core release. But also the community are themselves are funded however they manage to, to produce plugins on top of that. We have many of you. Who, who here is a, a developer at a, uni at a university or an institution or a college or any schools? Okay, I can see probably about 50 hands, which is great. And on the last day, we're having a developer-only event, on a uh, hack fest on, on uh, Friday. Uh, so that's how it's worked. That has enabled us uh, through these partners, um, and I think that's most of the partners um, that are around the world, there's sort of uh, 67 something companies around the world um, that uh, support Moodle as a partner. There's uh, three here in the US, Classroom Revolution, Moodle Rooms, and Web Anywhere. Uh, Remote Learner are no longer a partner as of recently. Uh, we are going to be adding some more partners in the US very, very soon. I hope to announce them later this week. Those partners pay for this group of people, Moodle HQ. This is us outside the office in Perth. Um, about two thirds of us are at the office uh, there. About a third of us are spread out around the world. Um, some of them are here. Um, so it's, these are good events for us to kind of get together as well. Um, so make sure you grab your, uh, any of these people uh, around the conference if you see them. Ask them the hard, curly questions because they need to hear from you. I say so. Um, and our, the values of HQ, are, you know, they're very aligned with the mission of Moodle. Um, it's about learning. It's about being open. It's about respect. It's about being ethical. And it's about experimentation. It's about uh, trying new things and... Um, and pushing the envelopes. So this is what we do. We, we work on the Moodle core. We fix bugs. We look after security. We integrate software from around the world. We uh, work on community education. We uh, actually do new developments as well. 
Um, we have a Moodle mobile app, um, which just, we just, the latest version was just released, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, we provide notification services, so that's how messages can get from your Moodle to a student's mobile app, for example, through the mysterious internet. Um, we also maintain and develop all the, the, the community sites, Moodle.org, the Moodle Docs, the Tracker, Moodle.net, which is our OER platform, uh, open educational resources. Um, we run a MOOC, and the next one is, it runs twice a year. The next one starts in uh, only a few days. I think it's August 9th. So if you're new to Moodle, you may want to join on a free MOOC. It lasts four weeks that we're running, uh, and that's happening soon. But the problem with that is that most of our time, this team uh, are spending this time maintaining core and the community systems. Despite your opportunities for feedback through these systems, you probably feel pretty small. Your voice is not really being heard. Um, you may feel that way, because I hear that, and people say they're disconnected from the roadmap. Oh, the roadmap's got nothing to do with me. It's just kind of set on high, and um, you know, that's not a good way to be feeling. Even if you pay for your own developments, it can be difficult to maintain them yourself. There can be quite a, lo a lot of work in maintaining plugins. It's much better if those features get into core and are supported by the whole community. But it's difficult to do that. Um, every time we integrate things into core, it goes through a lot of reviewing and work to, to make it happen, to be integrated code-wise and also interface-wise. And <clears throat> I'm not saying Moodle's perfect by any means. But even to do what we're doing now takes a lot of work, and we need to be doing more. We all want Moodle to be faster, to be better, and, and um, easier to use. All of us. We all have, I'm sure, a wish. Uh, and there is a wishing tree, I hope, here. <laughs> so you can write your wish on a piece of paper, and I'll talk a bit, about, a bit more about that in a minute, what happened at uh, the last moot, the Australian moot. So as Moodle evolves, this is what I think needs to happen to it. You know, Moodle is the thing that's in the middle. Maybe I should have called it middle. Um, it's, it's in the middle between students and teachers. It's, it's the thing that's in between. It's the thing that's in between the, the teachers and the techies. And a lot of you are probably on, at your institution are on one side or the other of that, and you're probably always trying to get the other side to behave. Um, it's a constant battle, I know. Moodle is between uh, devices and servers. You're using Moodle on this thing. The actual Moodle site is somewhere over there. It's running on some hardware, physical hardware somewhere else. There are so many things that can go wrong. I daily marvel at the internet working at all. It, it is incredible. You, you can use a, you know, sometimes when I'm using a text window, like a terminal, you know, and I'm logged in on a server somewhere, and I hit a key on my keyboard, and immediately that letter comes up on my screen, and I know that a byte of information has been sent halfway around the world through thousands of connections and come back in a time, you know, almost instantly. And I, sometimes I just sit there hitting the key, just going, oh my gosh. <laughs> Because it is stunning, and we've just got so used to it. Now we're just tweeting and you know, sending stuff everywhere, and it's, it's incredible. But in that environment, what happens if one of those things fails temporarily? Oh, Moodle's down. <laughs> it always cops the blame, because it's the thing you're trying to get to and the thing you're using. Sometimes it is Moodle, but not always. Moodle's also the thing in between organisations and communities, so the officialness of an organisation and the community of people there, it represents somehow the face of the university, it's the place, or a school, or a workplace, um, it's the face of it in a way. And lastly, Moodle is between developers and pretty much everyone else. So what needs to happen is Moodle needs to disappear. It needs to become almost transparent. We need to be trying to make these interactions with each other transparent. So we're actually talking to each other. We're doing what we came there to do, which is teach uh, or learn, uh, to interact in a different way in our jobs. 
we don't need to be thinking about, oh, this is difficult or this is, uh, this is slowing me down. We want to be getting to a point where we're just doing our jobs. We're not thinking about Moodle. And it's similar to Linux. Linux and Unix as operating systems are in everything. Almost every one of these devices has Unix in it. It just becomes invisible. All the cloud stuff you hear about, all the new internet hosting technology, it's all mostly based on Linux and, and Unix. So it's just sort of become invisible. So to get Moodle to this kind of point, to be so usable that we don't even think about it, we need more major new developments and we need more full-time core developers. It's just, and I've tried for 13 years to do this by coordinating many, many part-time people. It's got us where we are today, but it's necessary sometimes to have dedicated people who are working all day in teams, uh, going through sophisticated scrum, agile methods um, to efficiently develop software to the kind of quality we all expect. We also need organised feedback. We need the voice of the community to say, we need this, because the sort of territory where Moodle's going into is new. We, a lot of people teaching on Moodle now never learnt on a system like Moodle. It's the, like the first generation. And we don't even know what's possible yet with learning and using these devices. We're still all learning together. So how do we combine that into a direction so we know what Moodle should be? What we're not doing is we're not going commercial. We're not changing any licenses. Uh, we're staying on GPL license as, as always. We're not selling out to any large ed tech company. Uh, we're not accepting venture capitalist funding. And I have nothing against those who do, but it's a very particular thing going on and it seems to be a bit of a, even a, a bubble round sort of at the moment with internet investments, some of these massive figures you hear about. But th that kind of money comes with attachments, it comes with particular agendas, um, people who loan money, they want it back, and they want it back with a lot of interest, and they want it back with, they, and they, they want user data, they want uh, all kinds of stuff like that. That does not jibe well for me with Moodle and what Moodle should be as an open source project. So, the harder way to do things is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We are these three main things. We're launching the Moodle Association, which is a new association you may have already heard about, but I want to tell you about again, and maybe you haven't. We are launching official Moodle Moots, and you're at one, and I'm so happy uh, that we're here. Uh, we're launching Moodle Cloud. So we're going to go through these three things. <clears throat> Thank you, someone's a Moodle Cloud fan already. That's really good to see. It's only been a few weeks. So the first thing is the Moodle Association, and this is really uh, the really the biggest uh, change. Um, it's about, it's a separate organization, and it's about designing the next Moodle. Moodle users can work together in the association, you know, members of the association, to decide the ro Moodle roadmap and pay for it. How does that work? So this is a non-profit organisation. It's owned by users. You know, we are setting it up. Moodle HQ is setting it up, but then we're stepping back, and it's just going to be an autonomous organisation. It collects annual fees for membership. These go into a development fund. There are processes that they go through uh, in the association to determine what their priorities are and what what they, what you hopefully want to work on. And then the association hires Moodle HQ to develop those things in core. So our job is to maintain a crack team of Moodle core developers who are working together, have all the processes set up to efficiently make Moodle software. The association hires us to do what the community wants. How are these priorities determined? There's a process that we've come up with. It's six month cycles. Uh, there's a four month specification period where uh, people work on specifications. Somebody will stand up and own a project and, and lead a particular specification project. 
And that's just basically to produce a nice document that says, this is what we want, this is who it's for, this is how it works, this is what screens look like, this is how the functionality should be, um, and so on. Then, um, and all that happens online with the community, anybody can participate in any project. Then at the end there's kind of a clean up period where all these things get tidied up and ready for elections. I believe you've got elections here in about two years, so you're, is it the next, end of next year or something? It's already uh, well under, our elections won't be that long. <laughs> uh, these elections will be about like a month of voting. And uh, depending on how big a member you are, the big members get a big pile of voting points, the small members get a small pile of voting points, but you basically push your points onto the projects that you like, depending on your priorities. We add up all the points, and then we have a nice list of, prior of priorities. The, and then the committee that runs this association will then uh, charter Moodle HQ to do that work. So the levels for your interest, about between $100 a year. That's Australian, so it's even less. It's probably 80 bucks here. Um, up to 10,000 Australians, again, probably 8,000 or something US. Um, and it's very, going to be very global. We really want an international organisation, and I've already got interest from people all around the world already. We haven't actually started yet. We're just going through the registration process right now and the legalities of making a non-profit and so on and so on. And it's taking a bit longer than I was, uh, would have liked, but we're getting there and eventually we'll, we'll launch it. Um, Shannon Johnston is here. She's one of our project managers. Just sat, stand up, Shannon. Um, so she's, uh, she's looking after the, uh, getting the association going. So if you've got any questions, you can talk to her or if you're any interest, grab Shannon. Uh, or you can just email us through this email here, info at moodleassociation.org. The second thing is uh, the moots. Um, we came to the realisation last year that to do the kind of feedback and have the kind of link with the community that we need, we need to run the moots sometimes. So we've started this uh, idea of running some moots. This is the second one we've run. Uh, the first one was in Australia. Um, some of the key things that we're trying to do at our Moodle Moots, and I should stress that I'm not um, saying that there shouldn't be other Moodle Moots, and that there always has been community Moodle Moots, and always should be, um, run by whoever feels like running one. Um, and many of them are terrific, and I get to very fortunately visit quite a few of them around the world. Um, this is to supplement that. It's just to have a more direct connection with Moodle development. And that's why you're here, is to kind of be closer to us on, on uh, making Moodle uh, better. Because if you have users talking to each other only, um, they may come up with great ideas, but getting that actually into Moodle core is a very long, hard process from there. And we're trying to make that an easier process. So some of the things we're doing is to have facilitated working sessions. Um, and they're happening today. There are working groups happening today on a number of topics. Um, and they're about determining what people want. Um, and so I hope you take, if you're taking part in those, take the opportunity to, to network, but also to think deeply about what it is that you need. Um, we're trying to focus on a variety of sectors. Moodle gets used in all kinds of places. And, um, uh, K-12, university, uh, workplace, but also unusual ones that you might, don't think of. Um, health. Many hospitals use Moodle, and it's interesting, they often don't have uh, committed e-learning people. They just have a doctor or something who says, oh, we need to have some training for this or that, and they stand up and they, they do it. And Moodle gives a tool that enables them to, to do this. There's a guy here in the front pointing to himself. He seems to be exactly... I seem to be describing you, sir. So, uh, and it's, it's all kinds of places. Um, so we're trying to get away from just being focused on any particular sector. We're trying to provide fewer choices and have more, um, less, rush, less rushing around and making choices between six or seven um, sessions happening at one time. I hope you appreciate that, because I do. 
Um, really, look, the program committee is always holding me back. Personally, if I was running the program, we would all be sitting in this room all day and we would have a series of six minute Pecha Kucha style presentations all day. <laughs> That's how I would do it myself. So we, we've achieved a compromise. Um, we are trying to get out of this room. So there's a lot of people here, but there's a lot more people who can't be here. And we're working hard to get good quality video recordings that we can put online. And so hello to you online. Um, so you see, you'll see a lot of cameras around in, in um, uh, some of the rooms. And uh, I like kind of a TED style idea where we have a stream of Moodle videos coming out from Moodle Moots around the world. Uh, and you can just tune into a feed and occasionally get one. Um, and I think that's going to be very helpful for the community. Lastly, we're really encouraging research and development. Um, and a bit more about that in a minute. So that's what we're trying to do at these moots. Here's uh, the stage at, this is the Australian moot a couple of weeks ago, which is the first one we ran. Familiar slide there. It was 512 people there, 100 presentations. Um, this is what the working groups were about. We had, uh, the first one was on course archiving and rollover. The second one was on assessment analytics. The ones at this moot are different um, and very, very interesting. Just to give you an example of kind of the, the output of that first day of the working group, this is from the one I was involved in, uh, course archiving and rollover processes. It's not about cars archiving and rollover. So this is all about what happens at the beginning of the year, what happens at the end of the year. How do you reset things? How do you restart things? How do you save things? Which Moodle is not very good at itself. And so everybody builds lots of solutions that add on top of Moodle, and they're all different. So we tried to sit down and work out what was the toolkit that Moodle needed to enable everyone to do these jobs a lot easier. And we came up, number one, bulk course handling. So you should be able to select a bunch of courses and do these kinds of things. Bulk copy, bulk freeze, I'll mention in a minute, bulk backups, bulk course visibility, turn them on and off, bulk grade item visibility. So these 100 courses, I want to hide the final grade. These 100 courses now show the final grade, bang. You know, you want these bulk operations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there was the idea of a course welcome wizard that says, you're in a new empty course. Did you know you can restore from, a previous, from the previous year right now? Something, just small things that would help teachers uh, do that themselves. The, probably the best idea we came up with there was about a freeze flag. So a way, at any context in Moodle, at a category or a course or an activity, to say, this thing is frozen. It's read-only. So you can still read it, but you can't write in it. You can't change it. And that simple tool enabled a lot of scenarios that people wanted to be able to lock things um, or, or keep them as available for students for a certain number of years, um, uh, and so on. Um, similarly, a lot of people wanted grade archiving, which is separate from a read-only course. And this is actually to lock the final grades in a read-only way that is truly read-only, like read-only like a PDF read-only. So even if you upgrade Moodle and the code changes and the logic may change, that the grades should never change. It doesn't matter if they're a result of bugs. <laughs> they should be they're fixed. Um, and I, we went through an issue about this just with 2.9 and 2.8 quite recently. Um, but uh, that's, there needs to be a way to do this properly and so on and so on. We came up with a few things that I'm not going to go too much detail because of time. Relative dates was another one people said they wanted. You know, assignments should be, this assignment is due four weeks after the course starts or four weeks after you get enrolled. Um, useful features. Better UI, default visibility settings and so on. So, I've talked about the association, I've talked about the moots. Um, so the, these kinds of things that happen at working groups at the moots 
may then become association projects. And I hope they do. I hope someone from the working groups takes it to the association and, and pushes it further, turns this list of requests into a specification that people vote on, fund, give to us, and we can work on. And so the financial model next year will look more like this, where we still have the Moodle partners crucially providing support for the project, the community, all the processes that need to be happening, as I described before. But the association is additionally uh, funding these new developments for new features. And the result is a much bigger, faster Moodle. The third thing I wanted to talk about was Moodle Cloud. So at the beginning of last month, uh, we, we finally released our little baby we've been working on. And uh, it was a lot of fun to put this together. Um, and if, has anybody not heard of Moodle Cloud yet? Don't be, if you haven't, a couple of hands, okay. So if you go to Moodle.com, you will see Moodle Cloud. You can basically press a couple of buttons and you get a text on your, uh, as an authentication on your phone and then you get a Moodle site for free. It's instant, pretty much, to get that Moodle site. It's always, a, uh, it's a full Moodle version and it's always current. We're going to be always keeping them up to date. It has an unlimited database size, which means you can write as many forum posts as you want in there. No limits to that kind of thing in Moodle. Um, but it does have limitations, 50 users and 200 megabytes disk space, which is not a lot. And that's because it's a free service uh, and it's costing us some money to run it, but we're trying to keep it under you know, in a, uh, a good um, level that we can support. This solves the problem primarily for those teachers who are on their own, who can't afford services, who are already struggling on a teacher wage to do anything in their classroom, already completely overburdened with administrative processes, but have the ability to quickly get a Moodle going and do something small with their class there. We also took the step of uh, adding to this um, a feature that isn't in Moodle, but our good friends at Big Blue Button. Um, we've integrated Big Blue Button in there, also for free, but it's up to six people at a time in a session. So that enables you to talk real time. If you're interested in Big Blue Button and you don't know about it, they're here. Um, and this works really well. It's very integrated with Moodle. So after we released it, we had a lot of feedback. And this is, you know, what sort of feedback did we have? We had um, a lot of people very happy about it. There was sort of a lot of articles already. Um, it's been uh, really good to see what people are talking about. Um, However, immediately people are starting to go, what happens when I hit the limits? Uh, how do I, how do I um, uh, make it bigger and so forth? Well, the answer is you go to a Moodle partner. You know, this is, if you really want to get bigger, then you go, to, you, you go to a Moodle partner. And that's why we built Moodle Cloud in this restricted way. It's not competing with Moodle partners. It's actually just providing the missing piece that we never had which is if you've heard of Moodle and you want to try it out, you probably these days expect to go to moodle.com and press a button and get it. And now you can. Um, but some people are saying the, uh, it's advertising supported. That's how we're covering the, the, some of the costs of running this server. We have ads on it. I'm not a big fan of ads either. Um, but it is a model that, that works that lets us fund this stuff. But some teachers are saying, uh, well, we, you know, we just can't do it because it has ads. Um, and that's, that's a, a bit of a shame. And some teachers say they want a few more. This is the major feedback we get. Out of all the different feedback we've collected, we get these four ones. The first one is I didn't get my SMS. Where's my code? Um, and that's probably a very, very small percentage. But of course, it's very urgent. So they do always contact us. Um, it's under you know, point. 0.01% or something. Um, and that's because SMSs are kind of out of our control. It's a, it's a wild west of technology out there. Um, 
The second one is, what's my name on my site? It's so easy to sign up, apparently, that people do it and they forget what their site's called, <laughs> even though we send you an email. But they probably put in a fake email, so they don't have that email. <laughs> and then they forget what their site's called. And it's like, well, you know, it's a free, it's a free thing. I can't help you too much with that. The third thing is people say, can I get rid of the ads? And then we explain it's advertising supported. And the fourth thing is, can I get more users? And we say again, it's limited because um, of the reasons I said. But we're studying the whole thing. We're, we're getting used to how all this is working. We currently have about 3,500 Moodle sites now on Moodle Cloud. Um, about 10 gigabytes of files have been uploaded already. Um, and it's just, it's not even breaking a sweat. The system is just really good. I'm so happy with our, our cloud system, how well it's working. Um, yeah, well, thanks, Michael. So, uh, it's, you know, I was talking about one character going across the internet. Just when you look at the complexity of this machine we've just built, it's, you know, it's really amazing. And all of our Moodle partners have built their own cloud systems for, for larger, hosting already, you know, and it's just, it's amazing what can be done these days by combining software. So we're still studying this whole thing, we're thinking about where to go next with it. Um, one of the interesting things that we can do now as Moodle HQ, having access to so many Moodle sites that are in use, is that we can do research on this. There's interesting data there, and I'm not talking about anything that's private. We can do things like say, is anybody using this plugin? Um, or what, what's the balance of use? You know, what, how are people using this versus that? In future, we can actually try new features. So we can actually do A-B testing. We can roll out, if there's a new prototype of something, we can ask people to opt into a, the new cutting edge version, and we can test the new interface against the old interface and get data from that. So, our researchers in the community, I think it can be a very interesting tool for us to learn about Moodle and how to improve it. And I'm looking forward to that. To finish up, I just want to talk about our current development priorities, what we are working on. We don't have an association telling us what to do yet. Um, so these are the things that we're working on. So number one, we're working on usability in general. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. Number two, we're talking about, we're looking into, into competency-based education. This is a feature that's been on our wish list for at least 10 years. And it's been implemented in many different ways. Um, Gavin Henrik has a talk where he's covering some of those ways that exist now. Um, but we need something in core that can handle competencies, store competencies per person and um, update them. Um, there is a spec that's under development at this URL here in, the Moodle, in Moodle Docs. It won't be ready for 3.0, but we're working on it now. It's a priority. The third thing is we're uh, finishing templates. This was introduced in 2.9, and templates are more of a developer thing, but they're like, uh, well, I'll show you in a minute. They're like Lego blocks, and you build up the page. And fourthly, a big focus right now is getting the Moodle mobile app really good. So let me talk briefly about them. This is a, that's the wrong photo. This is a completely random photo of a giant Lego robot that I found in the mall around here. <laughs> I just thought it's pretty amazing. That's like five meters tall. It's a lot of Lego. Now this was the photo I wanted to show. This is the usability lab that is uh, here on campus uh, that we were in yesterday that Brittany was referring to. And it's a world-class um, facility with very good facilitation, I should add, as well, um, where they go through uh, usability studies and people using Moodle. This is uh, a lady who's using Moodle there. She's actually in the room right next to us behind one-way glass. The other screen is showing her screen so we can see what, what she's doing on Moodle. She's talking about what she's doing. We can hear it. Um, we took turns in acting as a kind of a help desk. If she had any trouble, she could call us. And um, a couple of them didn't know they were talking to me. Um, so it reminds me of the old days back when I used to be in IT support. Um, but it was, it's a real eye-opener. Um, you know, some of these things we knew from other sources, but the amount of information and, that we collected and organised 
about things we should focus on was incredible, uh, just one day's work. Um, so the approach with usability is, and I'm including accessibility under usability, because accessibility is about usability for people who, have, um, who are using alternate methods who um, are missing sensors. Um, the first one is integrating popular plugins and modifications that are out there. A lot of people in the community have done work in usability and accessibility, and it's about getting that into core. The second part is taking action on this usability and accessibility testing that we do, that you do, that people do around the community. And thirdly, listening to the Moodle Association. You know, if the Moodle Association says, this is just unusable, we need to fix it, this is how we will do that. Um, and lastly, hiring more developers at HQ that have a UX, a user experience specialisation. We've not done that in the past. We normally say we need PHP developers, and we get hardcore PHP developers, and the user interfaces, we don't, we don't have many people who are, fo we need more people who focus on interfaces. So that's our general approach there. The competency-based framework, we are starting with Tatara's implementation, which is a, a, version, a Moodle, version of Moodle with add-ons. Um, we're looking at building basic well-designed structures in Moodle core for storing the data, for manipulating the data, um, but it's designed for expansion. A university's approach to competency-based education may not exist, but if they did want to use it, it's going to be different from how a primary school does it, which will be different to how a company does it. But there are certain commonalities of the information that they all need. Just like we have users in Moodle, we have courses in Moodle, competencies will be like another core data inside Moodle. And we're building it so that we can add plugins on top of that, on top of our learning platform, to, to suit people's different needs. And we plan to integrate the ideas from Outcomes 2, which Moodle Rooms worked on um, a couple of years ago. Um, but it's not a complete implementation yet, so we're integrating all of that. That's our plan. The templates I talked about, this is the Lego stuff. This is for developers. They, it means that bits of Moodle pages can be written in a way that um, developers can use to build up pages in a standard way. And this means Moodle looks more consistent, and it means when, you, when a designer makes a lovely theme, it's easy, and um, it looks consistent right across the board. So it's just effective. And themes are what you see, right? They're the things that people really see, so it's important to get this improved. And the last thing is the Moodle mobile app. Um, we just, I put an announcement last night on, uh, on Moodle.org about the new one. You may have already downloaded it, if, if you've got it. Um, it's a completely, we've rewritten it from scratch. It's a new stack. It has plug-in support, um, so it's more expandable. And already the developers have accelerated like five or ten times the speed of development using this new stack we can make this develop much faster than we could before. So it was worth the rewrite. Um, and it supports all recent versions of Moodle back to Moodle 2.4. And some of the new things are offline calendar events. Uh, you can view notes. It's got offline books, um, IMS content packages, much better interface, infinite load scrolling, lots and lots of things. I've got some pictures. This is a front page with a couple of Moodle sites. That's how it looks on a tablet in vertical mode. Um, that's what forums look like. Uh, that's a participants list. This is on Moodle.org. The course there has like thousands of people in it, but just loaded instantly. Messages looks like every other messaging app you've ever seen, except these are Moodle messages. That's when you swipe it across a bit and you can see the menu coming out. And, and so on. Um, it supports more. You can manage a space that you've stored stuff on your own uh, device and so on and so forth. A really interesting thing that I wasn't quite expecting with this app is the accessibility of it. Because it has a very standard regular structure and it isn't affected by the theme of the original Moodle site or customizations made on that Moodle site, it's very standard. And 
we've been putting a lot of attention lately on making this accessible, making sure all the headings are correct, making sure it has ARIA tags and things like that you need to do, because this is actually HTML. Um, and on an iPad or an Android device, they use that. And uh, did some testing with Aaron Page, who's a part of the accessibility group. It was in Montana a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he used it surprisingly well, uh, completely blind, I should mention. He used this app surprisingly well. And after we've made some modifications, it's, it's going to be really good. So this is actually a very accessible solution. And I wasn't expecting that, actually. Um, but it's a nice, nice sort of side effect of having an app. That's what books look like and so on. I'm running out of time, but um, I just wanted to state, I hope all this stuff I'm talking about makes sense, that you can see the general where Moodle's going, how we're moving forward, why we're doing the things we're doing, not to be scared by new changes like the association, um, but it's all designed to make this open source project function as well as it can, and to make this software among the best software in the world. That's our goal, and support all of our endeavours. But we're all in this together, and uh, we're all walking down this road together, and we're going around the corner, and we'll discover where we get to. So anyway, I'm very, very pleased to be here. I hope I could talk to you personally in the next couple of days. Thank you very much. <laughs>